and it's a carefully placed mug. Uh, I was actually just drinking from this. If you like the idea of merch that kind of implies that you spend more time practicing legato than playing with your kids, that's that's what my merch is about at the moment. Uh, if Daddy loves me, why is he always practicing legato? It's an idea that I had. I thought it would sell like hotcakes. It hasn't. So, you know. Uh, anyway, in this video, um, I was getting pilloried by um, Alec Bourne, uh, the Line 6 Midi Man scientist, um, for essentially having a floppy fish here. So I am a fan of kind of just have that flopping about at the moment. Um, do I need a pedal board? Yes or no? So this is a video investigating that. channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favourite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Um, so yes, this the micro switch, I have to say, in some venues was moving a little bit. I've, I've gigged this twice like this. I've been enjoying this idea of having a more minimal rig because I want something that I can easily back up. That goes like that. Now, the reason really for a pedal board, I guess, would to keep things tidy. I, I quite like the concept of the Didario Expand because this kind of recognizes, as I'm sure some of you guys can relate to, that a pedal board is not a fixed thing, right? It's a, a, it's a, a point in time, as Neil deGrasse Tyson would say, uh, where these things are often subject to change and for me particularly I, I have thought about this a little bit like why do I change gear around I just think it's kind of interesting in a way to um, possibly get a little kick out of something which is quite repetitive like playing in a wedding band you can change bits of gear it helps me to get a sense of what gear is capable of to, to gig it and play it for two hours in a row all that sort of stuff but I think for a lot of people and you might be the same a pedal board needs to be flexible and is never really done. I have made a video saying my pedal board is done once and as soon as you said that, you changed something about it. So that's uh, no longer a thing that I tried to say. When was the pedal board invented was a question that I kind of had. And apparently this guy, Pete Cornish, uh, in 1972 made the first pedal board ever for a guitarist from Yes. You look at some of what Pete Cornish has done. It's actually quite interesting because um, you can see he's put up like his boards of uh, Jimmy Page, Eric Clapton, um, a bunch of cool folks, and those boards do seem very finished. Do you know what I mean? Like once those are together, you're not going to change those because they're kind of fixed. That was why I was using the Pete Cornish NG2 in the intro because that guy comes from where near where I was born actually. Uh, seems to be kind of the, the, the father, the inventor of the pedal board in general. Why do we need a pedal board? Do we need a pedal board? There are some really cool players, I think, that have, through the years, not had pedal boards. And up till 1972, there wasn't really too many pedals out there anyway. Pedals have kind of exploded in, in recent years, not 
not literally, but you know, in terms of numbers. And the pedal board now is super common to the point where if you show up without a pedal board, um, people will mock you relentlessly on the internet, probably. The main problem for me with pedal boards is that, um, and this was the same for pedal train as well, even like, this isn't a massive power supply. So this is the power supply that I have. It's the Harley Benton ISO 2 Pro, which is pretty good, like a pretty basic bog standard thing. But as soon as you try to mount it underneath, you kind of get these issues where it's like, well, the actual pedal board can't really accommodate it. So is the idea with these types of small boards that you stick them on top? Or are pedal boards these days really only catered towards tiny power supplies because that to me doesn't seem like a huge power supply but doesn't fit under the expand that's my only negative that i've got about the expand and also it was the same when i had a pedal train i had to use like bungs from test tubes to, to kind of get it underneath there and it was just the whole thing so i don't know let me know your thoughts on that how do you go about actually mounting that in a way that it kind of works on the edge there, but still part of that is going to be scraping the floor. Um, do you just get a smaller power supply, I guess? But like a Strymon Zuma is not going to fit under there. It's th That's one of the things that pedal board manufacturers, to me, don't seem to have quite figured out yet. Um, like dealing with lots of different power supplies. Quite why, I don't know. It is 2024 after all, and they are smaller than they used to be, but like this is a relatively new product from Didario, and then that kind of doesn't quite clear the legs. It's a bit odd for me. If a pedal like this is all I'm using, then I, I wonder, do I need a pedal board at all? Probably not, although it might help to stop the back of this getting wrecked. I, could, I should probably put the rubber feet on this, shouldn't I? Now, definitely, if you have two, three, four pedals, I'd, I'd say you, you're going to need a pedal board. Although there is a couple of players out there. Is it Wayne Krantz that I think I might have seen? There's a couple of guys that I've seen that literally just sat out their pedals each night with a, a, a power supply. It's kind of interesting to me. Maybe this is what I should be doing, like that. And then that would be basically fine. And... But this is the other thing with the HX Stomp is that I can't power it off of a normal power supply anyway. A foot switch will go over here, I think, because I need this end clear. So that should be here. Now my foot switches are this side for delay and drive. And then I've got an option here to put other stuff or not. And it'll be more consistent. The other thing that I find is that a pedal board actually lifts these buttons off the ground a couple of inches in a way that makes it a little bit more difficult, I find, to actually press the foot switches. It's like you have to take the foot off of the ground altogether instead of kind of having your heel on the floor and touching them. Is that something you guys find? I don't know. Can you get away with not having a pedal board in 2024 is kind of the question. Uh, or maybe you do like the Eric Johnson thing and just mount it to a piece of wood. Obviously, there's a big well, economy really made around this idea of pedal boards. And it's kind of interesting to me. Do, do we do we need them? I think a lot of people need them. But if I'm just using modeling stuff, then I could just put it on the floor, right? <laughs> what is this video? Cheers for stopping by. Actually, to be fair, maybe you had a point, Alec. So that does, in my mind, seem a little bit more reasonable um, and then still if I decided for whatever reason you know today I'm feeling like adding something else I've got all of that kind of real estate which I think is a great design from Daddario um, I'd even put on my Pete Cornish pedal if I was feeling very outrageous okay so I think this would be the way forward so I just use the extender a little bit to go on this side I don't actually need this headphone out often here's the send which is one that I do need to get to and I could put you know another pedal on this side whatever that happens to be and sort of rejig things that no power actually under the board because what I'm thinking is I'm probably only going to really add one pedal at a time to this sort of thing. If I was going to be doing it, I'm not going to be gigging with the HX Stomp and a load of pedals again. Otherwise, I'd just go back to the normal 
kind of hybrid board. But I think that could work. So I'm actually just put this together um, and maybe I, I am feeling like a little bit better about how it kind of looks <laughs> for sure. It definitely looks more pro. I'm going to be consistently with my foot developing muscle memory for where I need to go for what. And, and then this side is going to be, I guess, constantly in flux, whether it's getting used at all or not. Um, this space here, put a pedal there, take that along to the gig if you want, I guess. Is this normal? Am I unusual in this? You know, like, the idea for me that the pedal board is definitely always going to be something that's potentially changing, but the core of it staying the same. 